All right, welcome back. Let's talk about nominal interest rates. So, so far we are familiar with the annual effective rate that we like to denote with the letter I, and these are rates that are compounded once per year. And then we have our non-yearly rates that we denote with the letter J, and these are rates that are compounded multiple times per year, such as a quarterly rate or a monthly rate, but they could also be rates that take place over periods larger than a year, such as a two-year rate that compounds every two years. And now we're going to be talking about nominal annual rates or nominal interest rates, but they're actually not too different. They're actually just another way to present the rates that we are already familiar with. And so what this notation means here for our nominal annual rate is that we have an interest rate I, an annual rate, that is compounded m times per year. And sometimes we like to say that it's convertible m times per year. That's just another word that you may see or hear in regards to nominal interest rates. Now, that might sound a little familiar to when we talked about our non-yearly rates. If you remember when we talked about converting from a non-yearly rate to an annual effective rate, we used this formula where we took one plus our non-yearly rate to the m power where that m was the number of times that that non-yearly rate occurred in a year. So if this was a monthly rate, that M was 12 because there are 12 months in a year. It's compounded 12 times every year. And that M would have been four if our rate was quarterly, or it would have been two if our rate was semi-annual. And so that M is the same as this M. And so maybe you're a little confused and think, well, what is the difference then between this rate and this rate? Well, let's take a look at the wording for each of these types of interest rates. And I think that's going to make it clear how a nominal annual rate is different than our non-yearly rate and our annual effective rate. Because the bottom line is that a nominal annual rate is just these interest rates as stated without adjustment for the full effect of compounding. And that sounds confusing, but let's just take a look at the wording as I said earlier. So previously in a problem, we might have been told that our interest rate was a monthly compound interest rate of 2%, for example. Now it could be any percentage, but this is the wording that we would typically see. And so in this case, our monthly rate, which is a non-yearly rate, J, would be equal to 0.02. And this would be a monthly rate, right? And so in this case, our number of periods, or M, is equal to 12. But now when we are given a nominal interest rate, it's going to look like this. We're going to have a nominal annual rate of 24% convertible monthly. And so what that means is if we were to write this out, our nominal rate notation is I and then we have that M in parentheses. Now that's not an exponent, right? Don't think of it as our interest rate to a power of M because that's not right. It's just telling us how often that that rate is compounded where it is convertible. And so in this case, it's going to be equal to I, and then we're gonna have 12 in here because it is a monthly rate, right? Our number of periods M, just like it was up here, is 12 because it is convertible monthly. And so our actual rate is going to be equal to 0.24, which is our 24% that we got from here. But now how are these two rates the same? Because I'm gonna tell you that they actually are the same rate. Well, this is a nominal annual rate that we're being told is convertible monthly, and this is just a monthly compounded rate. It's not nominal and it's not yearly. But what we'll find is if we take our nominal rate of 0.24 and divide it by our periods M, right? If we divide that by M, which in this case is 12, we will get a rate of 0.02 which is equal to our monthly compound rate that we had up here. And so this leads us to our first conversion formula from nominal interest rates to other interest rates. All right, so here's our first conversion formula that I just introduced you to. If we wanna know the non-annual rate, or sometimes we'll call it the effective non-annual rate, per period M from a nominal annual rate, we take that nominal annual rate and divide it by the number of periods M. And that is going to give us our effective non-annual rate. So just like we did before, we had that nominal annual rate of 24%, we divided it by our number of periods of 12, and we received that 0.02 or 2% monthly compounded rate. And so really the only difference between nominal annual interest rates and our non-yearly rates is that they're just presented in a different way. And so while it may be easy to really get caught up in what exactly a nominal interest rate is, 
when it comes to calculations, right, you need to know what your different interest rates are. The only thing you need to know is how to convert from that nominal annual interest rate to interest rates that you will use in your calculations. Because what you're going to find is that we're never really going to use the raw nominal annual interest rate percentage we're given. We're always going to take that and convert it to something that we can use for our scenario. But before we get there, let's take a look at our second conversion formula, which is going to allow us to take our nominal annual rate and get an effective yearly rate. This formula gave us our effective non-annual rates, but what if we want to get the effective annual rate? Let's look at that next. All right, so here's our second conversion formula. So this formula is going to allow us to get an annual effective rate I from a nominal annual interest rate. So if you remember from the first conversion formula, we saw that an effective non-yearly rate was equal to the nominal rate divided by the number of periods M. And so that is what this part of our formula is right here. So if we were to replace this with just J, our non-yearly rate, which is what we said it was equal to, what does this look like? What is this formula right here? Well, this is our conversion from a non-yearly rate to an annual effective rate. It's the same thing. So if I were to backtrack here, it's really the same formula. We're just first taking our nominal annual rate and converting it to a effective non-yearly rate by dividing it by the number of periods M. So really, this is a formula we already know, but it's just adapted to account for our nominal annual rate. So now let's finally do an example and see this in action. So let's say that we were given a nominal annual rate of 12% compounded monthly. What would be our effective monthly rate and our effective annual rate? Now, I should quickly stress before we do this, I don't think I mentioned this before, but when we use this formula here, it's important to note that whatever your period is for your nominal annual rate, so in this case it is monthly, that same period is what the effective rate from this formula will give you. So for example, we are going to be finding the effective monthly rate because our nominal annual rate is compounded monthly. We can't take this rate and put it here and divide by four and say that this is the effective quarterly rate. That's not how it works. In order for that to be true, our nominal annual rate would have to be compounded quarterly, not monthly. But since our nominal annual rate is compounded monthly, we are able to use this formula to find the effective monthly rate. And so let's start by doing that calculation. We are told that our nominal annual interest rate, which is compounded monthly, so our M will be 12, is equal to 0.12, or 12%. And then of course, just like I said, we know that our M is equal to 12 because there are 12 months in a year. And so now we have everything we need to find our effective monthly rate. Our effective monthly rate J is going to be equal to that 0.12 divided by 12, right? Because if we go back to our formula here, we have our nominal annual interest rate, 0.12, and then we have our number of periods M, which is 12. And so if we take 0.12 divided by 12, our effective monthly rate is going to be equal to 0.01, or 1%. Now how about our effective annual rate? Well, in this case, we would take that same calculation, that nominal annual rate divided by the number of periods M, and we would add one to it, take it to the power of the number of periods, and then subtract one. But notice, like I pointed out earlier, that this is the same formula as converting a non-yearly rate, such as a monthly rate, into an effective annual rate. So really, we're just replacing the J that would normally have been here with what it is equal to in terms of the nominal annual rate. And so our annual effective rate is going to be equal to one plus that rate, 0 0.01, to the 12th power minus one, right? This 0 0.01 is the same as this calculation right here. We already did it our j is equal to that 0 0.01. And so this is going to be equal to 1.01 .01 to the 12th power minus one, and that will be equal to 0.1268 or 12.68%. And so that is our annual effective interest rate that is equivalent to the nominal annual rate of 12% compounded monthly. All right, so the big takeaway here is that a nominal annual rate is just another way to give us an interest rate that we already know how to use. We just have to take that nominal rate and change it into the interest rate that we want to use. And so let's finish off with one more example. So here we have that if the nominal annual interest rate is 18%, find the equivalent effective annual rates for the periods M equals two, M equals three, and M equals six. 
So first, let's write down that nominal annual interest rate that we were given. We are told that the nominal annual rate is equal to 0.18 or 18%. Now we aren't told what that M is though, right? Or at least not initially. We're just told that we have a nominal annual interest rate of 18%. We're not told how often it's compounded or convertible until the end of the problem where we are given three different periods. So we're gonna do each period one at a time. So really we have three different nominal interest rates here. We have one that is compounded or convertible two times per year. We have another one that is compounded or convertible three times per year. And we have a third one that is compounded or convertible six times per year. And so these are the three rates that we are interested in here. We want to find the equivalent annual effective interest rates for each one of these three nominal annual interest rates. And so let's start with M equals two. In this case, our annual effective interest rate is going to be equal to one plus the nominal annual rate with that period of two divided by the number of periods, which in this case is two, to the power m2 and minus one. So this is that formula from earlier. This is how we convert from a nominal annual rate into an effective annual interest rate. And so if we go through with this calculation, we'll have that i is equal to one plus 0.18 divided by two squared minus one. And that's going to be equal to one plus 0.09 squared minus one. And so that would be 1.09 squared minus one, which is going to be equal to 0.1881 or 18.81%. And so that would be our answer if our number of periods was two. And so let me clean this up a little bit and then we will work on the second one where we find our effective annual rate if the number of periods was three or M equals three. All right, so now let's calculate our annual effective rate for when our number of periods is three or M equals three. We're going to have that the interest rate or the annual effective rate is equal to one plus that same nominal rate, 0.18, that's not going to change, but what is going to change is our value of M. So we're gonna be dividing this by three and taking this whole quantity to the third power instead and still subtract one. And if we were to plug this into our calculator, it would be equal to 0.1910 or 19.1%. And that would be our equivalent annual effective interest rate if this nominal rate of 18% was occurring three times per year or when our M is equal to three. So now let's find our final rate for when M is equal to six or this nominal annual rate is convertible or compounded six times per year. It's gonna be the same calculation, except we're gonna change that value of M to six. So we're gonna have I is equal to one plus 0.18 divided by six to the sixth power minus one. And if we were to plug that into our calculator, we would find that our annual effective interest rate is going to be 0.1941 or 19.41%. And that would be our equivalent annual effective interest rate to this nominal rate when the number of periods is six. And so that's how we use this conversion formula to take a nominal annual interest rate and get an effective annual interest rate out. And so that's all I had for this lesson. I really hope you were able to take away that nominal interest rates are really not too difficult to deal with. They are just another way to represent interest rates that we already know how to work with. You just have to learn the conversion formulas. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for this video. So if you want to see some more examples, be sure to check out the examples video that I'm going to have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. But until then, I will see you next time.